Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from uh, you know today in history, or oh, looking at our first conversation for the day, and indeed uh, it is uh, the finance bill, and specifically the finance minister has hinted of Nigerians uh, paying uh, more tax uh, come 2022 as the you know economy you know moves towards uh, recovery. And joining us uh, this time around to look at um, all of that and make uh, some sense uh, and bring more. Um, Insights to that is uh, an economist, uh, Shegun Shogbuton. Uh, good morning to you, Shegun. Many thanks for joining us on the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thank you for having me, Justin. Good morning, Nigerians. Yeah, good morning to you. It is indeed our pleasure. All right, uh, the Minister of um, uh, Finance, um, Zainab Ahmed, uh, uh, came out yesterday and um, she has hinted that uh, we as Nigerians are likely to pay more tax uh, or levies, as it were, come 2022 as uh, the economy moves on the path of uh, recovery. Uh, okay, first things first, uh, let me just ask you, how did that particular uh, news hit you? Is it um, a step in the right, right direction or uh, do you think uh, we should be headed in some other direction? Well, um, okay, so, so for me, um, generally speaking, my, my, my perspective to, towards the tax issue is that um, nothing in life comes for free. Um, if you want development and you want progress, then you have to pay for it. Uh, most societies, most developed societies um, and economies that we like to benchmark um, across the world um, finance development and growth and progress with taxes um, whether that be taxes taxation of individuals um, you know uh, in terms of you know tax, taxation on earnings payee or company income taxes you know or royalties that the government make you know excise uh, duties and all of that you know one way or the other the only way to finance development is taxation so from a general philosophical point of view, I have never shied away from the issue of taxes, and I think we're not paying enough as a, as a country, to be honest. Um, but there is also a, a counter argument and a counter position to that, which is that um, two things. One, the economy, as we all know, um, is in a very terrible condition. We're recovering from a second recession in just five years. Um, um, inflation is terribly high. Um, uh, uh, disposable income, um, earning yeah. capacity of the citizens has been seriously impacted negatively as uh, a result of all sorts of variables, you know, uh, exchange rate management is not so good, you know. So, so when you juxtapose the fact that we're not paying enough taxes with that, then you have to realize that there has to be some caution on the part of government to be more creative in how it goes about generating that additional revenue that they need to fund development and to fund growth um, um, without uh, over without killing the citizens basically so there are ways that they can go about this um, you know without necessarily increasing too much the tax burden that perhaps may be already too high on some people you know so so it's a it's a very complicated um, conversation because there is also the issue of um, the tax net and how many people are actually paying taxes, you know, whether as citizens, individual citizens, or as corporate organizations and all that. How many people are actually um, responsible for the taxes that we generate as a country? You know, it's it's it's, it's nowhere near enough. So so that I, I think that there has to be some balance to, to the conversation. Okay, so um, let's also look at, you know, let's try to understand what of all of this means for Nigerians. I mean, you know, the ones, I mean, everybody, uh, those in the market, every person with this additional tax, uh, the hint that we might be paying it, what does this really mean? Um, well, looking at the finance bill, um, to be honest, I haven't seen much in all of the analysis that is out there, and I would encourage every Nigerian to just, you know, read it up. Um, a lot of these things are not really that complicated. You know, just read it up, just Google it, and you'll find a lot of information out there. And from what I've seen, I don't think that there is any significant um, 
direct increment in tax rates um, um, coming in in, 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 in 2022. I, I, I think that what the minister, uh, finance minister is doing is just to prepare our minds for some of the measures that they are likely to introduce that will invariably impact on perhaps the cost of goods and services, especially electronic services, um, as they begin to implement some of these policies. So there's a clause, there's a clause in the finance bill, for example, that gives the minister, subject to the approval of the National Assembly, uh, powers to make regulations for the imposition, administration, collection, remittance, and distribution of areas of stamp duties and electronic mm -hmm. money transfers collected between 2015 and 2019 fiscal years. That is a very, very strong provision that has, you know, serious implications for um, for people doing business, especially in the in the e-commerce space. Um, so there's a possibility that the government can look at you and determine how much you owe um, in, in stamp duties and in levies payable on transfers that have been made through your platform over a four year, the last four or five year period, you know, and then, you know, work with the, with the concerned companies on how to, how, to, how to collect that money, how you pay that money. You know, if that happens, then the only way for those companies to survive also will probably to look for how to increase the cost of the services that they're charging. So that is just an example of one of the ways that you might find that we're paying more. As is, even if you're not paying more in terms of direct taxes, you pay more for goods and services because people that are providing those services to you are paying more to the government. So that, that's, that's just an example. There are a couple more. Um, so like I said before, there is no direct increment in any of the tax rates. Um, so what, what the finance bill has done is to creatively look for ways to reduce the leeway that companies, corporate organizations have um, to avoid tax, you know, and all that. They're putting the notes a bit on, on corporate across uh, the various sectors. But in terms of us as individuals, I don't see anything that says that we're going to be paying more taxes directly. There's, there's no uh, direct increments in, in tax rates. Okay, but some quarters are concerned about, you know, the 7.5% VAT uh, for Facebook users, Zoom, amongst others. And, you know, some people are saying this is actually, you know, a new one. There are a lot of uh, uh, school of thoughts and, uh, you know, arguments surrounding that. Some quarters are also saying, following, following the 7.5% on Facebook users and Zoom, some people are saying this, is, this might just be, you know, another way, uh, you know, the president or this administration is paying back the people for the social media regulation, not allowing that to scale through. So it might just be difficult for a lot of Nigerians to have access online. Yeah, that, that, that is one of the major um, things that we need to look out for in this bill. Uh, because what, it's, what they've tried to do now is to give back in of the law um, to their efforts to tax um the social media space and the e-commerce space um i don't know you know i don't know if it's necessarily in response to what has happened whether it's with NSAS or with twitter ban you know i'm not so sure i think i think what has happened over the last two three years is that this government has been consistently looking for how to increase the revenue base and somebody has pointed them in the direction of social media you know the fact that all of a sudden huge volumes of transactions are actually happening on Facebook, huge volumes of transactions are actually happening on Instagram, on WhatsApp, on Twitter. You know, people are actually doing trade. They're actually making payments on those platforms. And the government is looking at all of that and saying, hey, this is escaping the tax net. You know, so I think what they're trying to do with this bill is to provide a backing, um, the force of law to um, taxing, you know, all of that activity. You know, so TikTok, as you all know, TikTok is a new phenomenon and, you know, it's, it's, it's like a wildfire now. And people are making money, you know, people are really, really making a lot of money on those platforms. Advert revenues are happening there, you know, and the government is just looking at all of that money and looking for how to sink its teeth into some of it, you know. So I, I don't think it's about the um, social media regulation thing. I think this is just, you know, the, the general direction that this government has been going over the last three to four years. I think given the fact that we're coming out of a recession and they're just looking for how to earn more money so that they can reduce borrowing or finance the deficit and all of that. So um, the, the concern 
you know, like I said, for me, my general philosophical approach is I don't have any problem with taxation. But I think that the government has to be um, reasonable in how they go about implementing these things so that the, the impact and the effect um, is not too dramatic and doesn't then have a counter um, counterproductive um, impact on everything, on society as a whole. All right, Chego, let's uh, just look... Um Let's take a cursory look at the nation's, uh, you know, tax regime and administration. Well, specifically, when the minister was talking um, yesterday, she mentioned, let me just quote her, she said there might be the need to revisit the antiquated um, stamp duties and capital gains tax for holistic reform by the parliament. You know, this is not the first time we've talked about stamp duties. Uh, the federal government uh, is seemingly reintroducing it and the uh, capital gains tax, these are taxes that we've had over time. You know, how, why are we reintroducing them this time around them, and how well did we do when we had them before now? Okay, so, so, so um, the, let's start with the stamp duties. Um, it's not being reintroduced because it didn't go away. It's still alive and well. Um, we're still paying stamp duties on um, transactions that we do with our banks, you know, and as, in as many channels as the government has the capacity to tax we're still paying those stamp duties. What this bill is now trying to do, and what the, uh, the minister was referring to, is the fact that now, if you remember, sometime last year, I think it was, um, there was this controversy between FIRS and NICOS with regards to who is supposed to collect stamp, stamp duties. duties. Yeah, so what this bill has done is to now put um, um, control over stamp duties under the Ministry of Finance, you know, and FIRS is with the Ministry of Finance. So I think what this bill is trying to do is just to use the law, the provisions of the law, and act of the National Assembly to resolve that controversy. So as far as we are concerned as citizens, we continue to pay our taxes. So the, the battle over who is supposed to take that income yeah, or, or, or administer it, if you like, is what this bill is now trying to resolve. Um, so that's on the stamp duty issue. Then for the capital gains, you know, so what this bill has also tried to do, like I said earlier, I found it quite interesting. There's a deliberate um, um, uh, approach within this bill to generally reduce as many reliefs, as many loopholes as there currently exist um, in existing tax, tax laws with this bill. So the capital gains issue slash capital allowances that people are entitled to 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 to, to earn or to to claim um, in the process of their filing for their tax returns and all that. What the bill has done is to take a toothpick and look through you know those allowances that are that that are available to to corporate organisations, um, SMEs, the large corporates, and reduce. Um, the percentages that they are allowed. For example, um, there is a provision in, in, this, in this act now that talks about, yes, you can earn capital allowances on, uh, on your assets, but those assets that are contributing, there is a percentage of, um, of, of, of um, relief that you are allowed based on how much those assets are contributing to your profits. To your profits. So it's, it's, it's all very creative ways of just increasing how much the government can get and reducing the reliefs that people currently have. There are other provisions, for example, that um, don't allow people now to carry over reliefs that have been earned in previous um, uh, reporting periods. So there's a provision that says that whatever reliefs that you earned, um, let's say in 2019, if you have not yet taken it into your returns for 2020, you can't carry it over. So, so those types of things are just what this this bill has been trying is trying to do to improve how much money that the government can get without necessarily increasing taxation in itself. Okay. So I, I know that uh, you know in the course of this conversation, you have actually touched on uh, this particular concern that I'm going to raise. Uh, do you think that this bill is 
geared towards addressing the issue of the policy gap between uh, the federal government and the state government in terms of tax collection. Uh, of course, you know that the laws actually, uh, if you see the way the laws are, uh, state governors seem to, or state government seem to have a, a hand mm. in collection of tax. Uh, so do you think that this, this bill is geared towards changing that narrative and allowing the federal government as a sole collector of all of the taxes, uh, personal income tax, the VAT, and what have you? Okay, no. So, so um, the personal income tax has always been um, under the um, legal control of the state government. And, you know, so the various uh, state land revenue services are responsible for, for collecting personal income taxes, except in the federal capital territory, where the federal government is responsible for that. So that still remains the way it is. Um, but you are right. What the bill, what this bill is try also trying to do, you, you notice that the minister made reference to the court cases that are going on. You know, a lot of states have sued labor states very famously, and then later joined by Lagos State and one other. I can't remember which other state now. Sued the federal government over the issue. Yeah, over the issue of the VAT and who is supposed to collect it. And the minister made reference to those lawsuits, and she said um, they will continue to monitor the outcome of that. But in the meantime, this bill has actually now made it very categorical, you know, that uh, VAT due to the federal government will be collected by the Federal Land Revenue Service so, so that there is no longer any ambiguity. And indeed, that has always been the case. You know, so I think there's a bit of political politics going on, you know, with this issue of VAT administration and what have you. Um, there are certain categories of uh, VAT that are collectible by the federal government. There are certain categories that are collectible by the state government. Um, so those that are that are due to the federal government, what this bill has simply done is to now clearly state in a law, so that there is no controversy anymore, that those ones that are due uh, to the federal government will be collected by the federal inland revenue service and nobody else. So, so what what this does is that whatever the outcome of that lawsuit or the lawsuits that are ongoing now, there is now a law that defines clearly how that will be administered. So uh, going forward, that matter is settled by this bill. All right, Trevor, let's talk about the issue of um, compliance. You know, that's one major setback when it comes to tax administration. You know, for 2022, uh, Nigerians, you know, will have to pay some more tax, whether or levies, if they like, whether they like it or not. And it's also coming in the wake of, uh, you know, this issue of um, subsidy uh, removal. How do you see the level of compliance come next year? And uh, what, uh, or just how do you think and, uh, maybe the federal government, the state government, you know, can do, uh, you know, to ensure that uh, uh, they have increased level of um, tax compliance? Um, again, you know, that's another... Um, interesting thing that this bill has tried to do. So I see several clauses where there is now stipulated five-year prison sentences or five million naira uh, fines or both um, in, in one clause of the bill for government officials that fail or in fact anybody that fails to report any activity by anybody um, uh, towards um, evading taxes. So if you have any information that somebody is supposed to pay tax and is not paying it, and you fail to report that, or you collude with that organization in the process of trying to um, um, evade those taxes that are due to the government, now this law is saying that you, you, you could go to jail for as much as five years. Um, there are a couple of other clauses like that that also provide prison sentences for tax evasion type of activities especially by um, government yes. officials. There's also another clause there that talks about remittance mm -hmm. of all uh, collectible revenues into the Federation account um, by government agencies and failing which there's a prison sentence now stipulated for whoever is you know, caught in that process. So the, the bill is making a deliberate effort to provide consequences for tax evasion. Um, mm -hmm. However, as with all other things in Nigeria, we know that our problem has never really been a lack of laws or a lack of good policies or a lack of good regulations. It's always been about the implementation, execution, and enforcement. Um, so if somebody goes to some corporate organization, they do a tax audit, 
um, uh, a review and they find that that company is supposed to pay 200 million naira in taxes uh, for a particular year. Um, and then you know, an official of that company then calls one of the audit team, somebody that led, maybe the person that led the audit team to a room and says, guy, you know, and they do what we know that people do. Uh, not just in Nigeria, I think it's all over the world, really. <laughs> you know, and they have a conversation on how to reduce that amount to a certain figure. You know, so what this bill is now trying to do is that if you are found out, you go to jail for at least five years. You know, so so the only question now is that will they be found out? And if they are, will there be enough uh, political will? Will the wheels of justice move adequately fast? such that those consequences can be meted out and they now serve as a deterrence for others. So if I get caught trying to help somebody evade taxes and then, you know, I go to court and we adjourn the case for five or six or seven years and maybe 10 years later, the case just somehow disappears and is eventually struck out because maybe for lack of uh, diligent prosecution, as uh, the courts will sometimes accuse the public prosecutors, you know, then what have we achieved? So yes, the law, is, uh, has made provisions for stronger um, uh, uh, enforcement of compliance to tax regulations and to get people to pay more taxes. But I'm just worried about, you know, our ability to enforce, you know, those provisions given our antecedents as a country and a society for impunity. All right. Okay. Um, just as we proceed in the course of the conversation, uh, let's let's yeah. now stay with, you know the implication of all of this. Now, uh, primary or basic economies, economics requires that you cut down taxes to boost your economy, not, you know, taxing a so, or, I mean, taxing an economy that is already slowed down. I, I don't want to use the other word, dying economy, but mm -hmm. economy that is actually slowed down. That's what, you know, basic economy requires that, you know, for government to, uh, you know, grow high economy, there's need to reduce taxes. And when taxes are reduced, uh, you would encourage, you know, investors, foreign investors, and, you know, all the factors in your economy. So uh, how do you make, um, what do you make of, of this particular action and where does this leave Nigerians in terms of the implication and the impact? However, we want to look at it. I know you said it doesn't really have, you know, such direct impact, but um, where does this really leave the people? Well, so so I think that um, we have to remember that taxation is uh, just is a fiscal instrument, is a fiscal policy instrument. Um, it's one of the ways that government tries to regulate what happens within the economy from the fiscal point of view, um, revenue generation, and then subsequent distribution of that revenue to drive development and all of that. Um, I, yeah, so I agree with you. you um, to a certain degree, if you want to drive growth and you want to drive development, especially in an economy that is recovering for, from a recession, um, it won't be a bad idea to use the fiscal instrument of taxation by reducing taxes, um, especially uh, uh, from the payee point of view of just for, for the citizens, um, whether it's by way of VAT or by way of payee, you know, uh, withholding taxes to increase disposable income. The argument being that if you have more income in your pocket to spend, then there will be more um, cons consumption, which will then drive investment. Um, so from a, just from a uh, uh, theoretical point of view, yes, that would work. Uh, but in a situation where we don't have enough people paying taxes, and I think that this, this, this point uh, cannot be overemphasized. I have always said that the, the, um, um, the obsession by various governments towards increasing taxation and tax rates and the number of taxes you collect and the number of things you can tax um, as against increasing the number of people that are paying taxes is one of the areas that governments have continued to fail. We need to widen the tax net, not increase tax rates. So I absolutely agree with you. I think government can actually reduce some of these tax rates, reduce the amount of taxes that each individual citizen is paying, but find ways to bring more people to pay taxes. We're simply, we don't have enough people to pay taxes because 
our informal economy is overwhelmingly larger than the formal economy. So the government is supposed to be looking for a way to drag more of the informal activity to the formal sector. You know, for example, I, I actually, you know, this might not be popular opinion, but I actually thought that the issue of the um, um, TIN, tax identification number, being required for account opening would not have been a bad policy because that is not increasing tax rates. It's not increasing the tax burden on individuals, but it will compel more people to pay taxes so that we can there are more people sharing the tax burden and the burden can then be lesser on each individual. But um, I think there must have been an attempt to put that clause in the bill and there was some sort of an opera and then the government came out to clarify and say, no, you know, uh, TIN is not mandatorily required for account opening. There's nothing like that in the bill. And if you look at the bill indeed, there's no provision like that. I would have thought that that is the kind of thing that the government should be doing. Rather than increasing taxes and warning us that we're going to be paying more taxes in 2022, bring more people to pay these current taxes that we're paying, or even right. reduce the tax taxes that we're paying. All right. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Shego Shogbito. I'm afraid that's as much as we can take on this particular discourse. Uh, thank you so much for all your thought and um, all the inputs that you have made. We do appreciate them. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, it is still with the breakfast and plus TV Africa will take a very quick break and um, indeed the uh, Omicron variant and of course the red list is still topical. We'll be looking more in that direction in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs>